None of this bullshit matters. What's happening with the government, no matter who was president, them kids in Chicago are still sitting in a warehouse with no fucking um, outdoor space and, and with a fourth grade reading and education. And they still foaming at the mouth because they're giving them drugs to get out of jail called the cut program. And they're breathing mold in their air. And, and we forgot about the kids. We got bigger issues. I'm not worried about other people's problems. I'm worried about my culture, the people I love and how they're being oppressed and the, the, the cycles that need to stop and the people that are enabling us. And that's who, I, who I'd be going at. Success for me and how much money I make is how I move the needle for my culture. And I'm not talking about black, white. I'm talking about creative thinking. I think politics are dumb. If we're both fighting for America, how are we going to fight each other to fight for one thing? If I'm trying to save a block and you trying to save my block, I'm not going to fight you to save the block. We're going to fight together. So instead of worrying about the bullshit, we need to worry about what's going on with these kids, why they can't read. Why do they build a jail cell for every time a kid can't read past the fourth grade? That's the problem. Is why is all this independent sector, the government with these big budgets, paying people to do things for the people, but they're not looking at where they're spending the money or how they're spending the money? How could a, a, a jail... A kid's jail be a million, 1.2 a bed for a child, and he, they, don't even let him, they don't even let him buy a real toothbrush. That's the problems that I'm dealing with in this moment is education and, 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 and teaching you know, my culture. If you could, half the people that give a fuck about Trump or Biden, they probably don't even know how to get a law passed. They don't know how to lobby. They don't even know how to change things. You understand what I'm saying? Like to make a law or to make change in America is a unilateral decision. A lot of people got to agree. So that should be what we should be doing is trying to work on how to stick together instead of what makes us um, separate as a social class. It's not about black or white. It's about 99 percent of the world that got to work for the one percent. And the way they make the one the 99 fight each other so that we continue to separate and work for the one percent. So either way, all these people that care about the president are paying for a billionaire, but both of them. I'm not jacking none of that. Pause, because I don't know what's going on. They're all gray areas. I can just control what I see and know. I'm not depending on the government to pay for my hospital bills. I'm not depending on the government to pay for my to pay for my, my where I live. I'm not knocking anyone that does, but I'm in the, four, the, 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 the unless it's capital gains, the 40 to 50 percent bracket. And I always owe taxes. So when you owe twelve million dollars of taxes, how do you pay that back without making twenty four million? But they snatch in your money every day. They fucking with your working capital. You know what they don't teach you in school? How to have money? How to keep money? You know why my network is? is, is, is I, I don't know how to keep it. I never went to school. Nobody taught me how to keep money or when to pay taxes. What capital gains is? What's a trust? Well, you know, no one taught none of that shit. So that's what we do. We talk about people that don't matter, shit that doesn't affect our personal life, and we're worried about what other people do and what they could do for us when we should be worried about uh, focusing on how to do for ourselves and understanding the money is man-made. I don't give a fuck about money. There's no gold behind it. It's all a Ponzi scheme. I care about love as my currency, how much time I spend with my child. What's my net worth? I'm a dad. That I pick my kid up from school and I bring him to school. I could bring him to work and I could bring him to a jail. I could bring him to a school and he's going to watch his daddy be a superhero. That's all that matters to me. So when you look at all these so-called moguls, you don't see their family life. You see contrived pictures of something that doesn't even matter on a red carpet. And their children aren't with them. I'm at home with my kids and then I'm being creative and I'm creating my own. Like I direct my own movies. I, I get them funded or fund them myself. I put them out, distributed them myself, and then I put them on my own streaming service. That's amazing. To be able to write a book and sell 60,000 books by myself and you don't know it, that's amazing. That, that's impressive. To have my own sneakers, to have my own, all that shit is amazing. Yeah. To me, I'm not worried about that bubblegum shit. That's why I left it. You understand what I mean? But I'm not going to be grouped up, never. And the feds don't need to call me because if they're watching or listening, they're like, yo, this motherfucker just living a nice, pleasant, boring life. The only lawsuit you're going to get from me is I yelled at you. That's it. You're not going to get none of that old funny shit because that's not what I do. You're not. There is no gray area with Dame Dash. And the receipts are there. Period. I tape everything. So, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Um, by the way, why do you think uh, crime is so high in Chicago? Because it's so, such a big state. You think because it's a big state? Yeah, it's like 16. See, 
There's plenty of big states, but why is Chicago go, go, so high? Go in crime? Google it. It's the reason why they say the crime rate is relative to how many people are there. So, so many people get killed because so many people are in one spot. You understand what I'm saying? It's just a big spot. That's why it is. But I would say the reason why is because the government enables the kids. They're not doing anything to stop it. It's happening worldwide. They're getting kids used to going to jail. So, you think what happens bad I, policies? I just think that if you put a kid yeah. in a situation, where he has enemies mm -hmm. and then take him away to go to jail and come back and put him back in the same situation, mm -hmm. he going back to jail. I think if you don't educate a child and you disenfranchise his family, uh, you're going to jail. Rob, could you pull up the clip? Could you pull up the clip by Ice Cube? I'm curious. And I still have uh, one last question within that context that I go back to, but I want to play this clip for you. Here's Cube with Bill Maher. Okay. And, and I kind of want you to hear this and tell me if you agree with him. Go for it. Okay, let's take let's take rap music. Let's take okay. it. Same people who own the labels own the prisons. True. So literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. So so you know it it seems really kind of suspicious if you want to say that word that it seems obvious you know the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry but they didn't make you write those lyrics it's not about making it's not about making somebody write the lyrics it's about um being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't. Certain flavors are exposed on the record. You know, some records are made by committee, you, meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. So. The, the narrative is really kind of, you know, structured and, 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 and really made into what the record company want the record to be. And what the, you know, a lot of artists are frustrated with this kind of music making. You know, a lot of people, you know, feel like they're being controlled by the label. You can this stop is how they do it. it. What are your thoughts on what he's saying here? It's true. It's obvious. Um... You never told me if a boss is a good boss if his whole crew goes to jail. Not Trump, just in general. If a whole, if a boss, if is, his whole crew goes to jail, yeah. he's around the mob. Right. If his whole crew goes to jail, is he a good boss? You ever been to jail? Can you answer my question? I don't judge it that way. I'm asking you a question. I wouldn't judge it that way. Okay. So you don't judge a yeah, good I boss wouldn't. by the how good his family rolls. Well, well let me ask, let me ask you a different boss, question. Maybe, but I'm asking you a question. How about I ask you a different question? Here's a question for but you. I'm asking you. A how question. do you judge a boss if 47 people around them get ask you killed? That. I didn't ask you that. Oh, it depends. If it depends on if it, if, if if it was 4,000 people, and only 47 got killed. Then I'll say that's not the bad a bad odd. Got but it. If, so if, then it depends. Would be the answer, right? I asked right? you if his whole crew goes to jail. Yeah. Is he a good boss? I thought you were trying to unify. Now you're trashing a president. I'm not, I mean, what kind of a unifier are you? Are you, are saying, you? I mean, what I, happened? Wait, 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 wait. Choose a position. No, don't. You can't tell me what to do. Tell me. Listen, listen. You're not listening. Yeah. I'm not saying that about Trump. I'm saying that in general. Yeah. Forget Trump. If you're a boss and your man right there and everyone that's in here goes to jail but you, are you a good boss? So was Sugar a good boss? You're not going to answer my question, huh? Because it depends. It's the same I answer would, I, you gave. I'm not, I'm not talking about another man. I would tell you it depends. Okay. So it's a... It's a, it's a it, it in depends. what way could your whole crew go to jail and you're a good boss? But in what way can 47 associates close to you get killed? What does that have to do with what I'm talking about? I'm asking about? a question from you. But you're not answering mine. Decide. You're not answering mine. Because I'm giving you the same answer you're giving. You're not, I didn't give you. Wait, I'm asking you a question. No, you, I'm asking you. All you I said, said it was. Depends. I didn't say it depends. I you said did. if a boss yeah. goes, if his whole crew goes to jail and he does not. Yeah. Is he a good boss? I'm not talking about Trump.
You are talking about. No, I'm not. You know how many motherfuckers I know whose whole crew went to jail? Yeah. You're just that's just the shoe fits wearing. I don't have no beef with this. Let me get let me get let me get it clear. Tell me. I'm not in here to be Trump bashing or Biden bashing or any of that. I'm just asking you a question of logic, not about politics. Dame, do you think racism exists? So you're not going to answer my question. But I gave it to you. I said it depends. Do you That's think, not an answer. You do, know that. Do you think racism exists? Of course it does. It does. Yeah. I'm racist as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so funny about that. <laughs> Yeah, you said you're racist yourself. Yeah. Why? Why are you? I'm against bitch ass niggas. Okay. So, but is that skin color, or could that be white, uh, black, so Asian, anything? White, black, Asian, anything. anything. Okay. So let me specify. I'm, Do you think racism towards a skin color or nationality, yeah, ethnicity there's, exists? There's definitely things that I assume yeah. because of color. If you want to call that racism, yeah, just because of natural experience. And so, what do you think about when you see a white guy? executive of a major label. What do you think about? Of a major... Label, like music label. Let's just say... Uh, let me finish. Yeah. A major, a major black label. If a white guy's running a black label, that's a, that's problematic for me. If a white guy's running a black label. Yeah. How about a black guy running a white label? It doesn't happen, but it doesn't matter. I think it, it, there's no such thing as a white label. That's what's funny, right? When you go into music, it's yeah. black music, but there's no white music. They don't have a white music division. It's just a black music division. Why is that? Is that racist? So, so I'm asking you, is that racist? Can you be, I'm not in the space, so I don't know. So be specific. Like, who has so a black... Uh, every every music... Do you, they say black or do they say hip-hop? Because Eminem is white and he sold bro, more records. I, I'm than not emotion. sugarcoating shit. Yeah. I said it's called black music. Head of black music. I'm not black and I listen to hip-hop. It's not what I... You're not answering any of my questions, bro. Yeah. I said, is it Dude, racist? Invite me on your podcast. I'll answer your I will. questions. All right, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come, come, come to America New. You de- no, you owe me that. That's, I'm that, with you. That's my thing. I'm if, game. If, 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 I'm with you. Right. I'm with you. What I'm saying yeah. is there is a black music division in every label. There is. Okay. And there isn't a white music division in every label. Okay. So I'm asking you, is that racist? But you're not going to answer. It's going to depend. I know. No, no, I, I, I don't know the facts. Too. I gave you the facts. You do know the facts. Now. No, no, I don't. Know. I'm telling I'm not, you the facts. Yeah. Why are you doing I, this? I would say a. You, how a, much? What's your network? A hip hop. What's your net worth? What's your net worth? I got a couple dollars. Yeah. So you ask me, yeah. and I'm asking you, yeah. what's your net worth? Uh, put it between three to five hundred. Three or five hundred million? Yeah. No, since I'm old. Since I'm what? Since I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> when you say net worth, that means you looking at a half a billion cash? Yes. Do you pay taxes on cash, it? Cash, I would say uh, uh, shy of 200 cash. Oh, yeah. Since I'm over, man. Yeah. You want, so. you want, you want, I have a, I'm, I'm at an auction. I'm about to sell my interest of Reasonable Doubt, Rockefeller, Inc. Okay. You want to buy it? What's it going for? It's, a, it's at auction. At auction? Yeah. Tell me. Send me an information. I'll look into it. I'm telling you. I Send it to me what, if it's an auction. I'm talking. It I'm going to be able auction. to bid. No, you said auction. It's so at, as an auction, you know, you I'm also waiting. You said how much is it? It says at auction. Yeah. But, you know, I have a judgment. So once anything, Dame, anything I have past a the feeling judgment, our dinner would be 10 times better than this podcast. Well, because you're paying for it. I, I don't have a problem paying <laughs> for it. There's no question. Can I ask you this one? No, how, you question. At, how do you look at a half a bid? I would blow all of that shit. <laughs> Well, how did you save it? You let, save it? You just look at it? Yeah. Well, what do you look at? Do no, you just no, look you, at your money? But you ask it. How, many, how often do you look at your bank account? Like, say, oh, make sure. I got it. Once a quarter, I meet with my guy. You meet your guy? Yeah. Once you, a quarter, he, I, I, we meet with the I, whole team. It's too hard. Saving money is so hard. I mean, I'm saying saving it. Like, when money's sitting, yeah. there's so many laws that come with it. And unless you're savvy about how to hold it, you're going to lose it, man. But you know what it is? So also, hard. For, 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 well, I, listen, I, I lost everything at 23, 24, 25, the first time I made money. 23 years old. I just supposed to lose totally everything. Totally get it. But, but I, I lose is, everything every year. But let me tell you, when I hit rock bottom at 25, my, my entire mindset changed. What's rock bottom? Jail? No, I didn't go to jail. What was rock no, bottom? No, rock bottom is... What's your version lo- of rock lo- Lost financially. I'm about to file bankruptcy. I don't have a penny to my name. That's not right. All my credit cards are maxed That's out. Relationships right. are gone. That's not right. Girlfriend, uh, fiance, and I'm about to go back into the military. To me at 24, 25. That wasn't rock bottom. That was rock bottom for me. You're spoiled. You're so funny. Yeah, let me tell you something. Rock bottom is when you don't have a place to live. Yeah. 
and you're a drug addict and you don't have your health. No, that's not. And you're not yeah. mentally stable. Financially rock bottom. That's, that's financially rock 25, bottom. 25, everyone's financially rock bottom. Yeah, well, but, what, These are the, you know what, but I mean? what it did do, you know what I did kids, learn? Kids usually are in college, coming out of college with fucking debt, right? You, now, know, Warren, a job. you know Warren Buffett, obviously. And you know Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is his partner that passed away. Yeah. There's a book he wrote called uh, uh, The Poor uh, uh, Charlie's Almanac. It's a very good book for you to have in the house. Just kind of uh, look through. They interviewed his kids. And they said, what did Charlie talk about during dinner with you guys? He said, that's the book right there, by the way. He said, dad always talked about people he knew that could have been rock stars that totally ruined their lives because of bad decisions. Mm. He taught more how to make bad decisions and avoid them mm. than how to make good decisions. A lot of times when we get money or fame or success, sometimes you don't know how to handle the limelight. Sometimes you all, don't know how to handle all the, the money. How do you... Yeah. Again, how does somebody coming from a social class of 99% understand day one how to deal with zero? I'm with you. No, no, but for sure. But I'm saying at 24, yeah. let's say you're broke, it's hilarious. Everyone at 24 is broke right now. Just ask the well, Gen Z. No, but but but, but what I'm but saying I was is, a worker and I was a sales guy. I was a guy that actually worked. What I'm my saying is, I, I think it was way worse at the time than you thought. At, in hindsight, but now the that worst you're point of my life, the worst point of my life was living in Iran, going through a war to ten years old, and we got bombed 167 times yeah, in a day. That's that's, that's real stuff that we have. Where did that happen? Iran. That oh, was you're from in, Iran. The, I'm from Iran. Yeah, I was oh. born in '78. We left Iran at '89. So I lived in Iran for almost 11 years. Yeah. Mm. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.